So I'm a little bit late to the party on this particular issue, but nonetheless, I still think it's really important and I want to talk about this. So last Thursday on the show, we talked about how Donald Trump's administration is choosing to indict Julian Assange under the Espionage Act. And basically the next day, we got some more responses from politicians who matter, who are running for president. Tulsi has been a leader on this issue. She's been talking about Julian Assange and how this is, you know, it, it's more important than just Julian Assange. It's really not about him. This is about a broader issue that's more important. It's about press freedom. So I've really given her a lot of praise and I made another video about a month or so ago where I talked about how I wish Bernie Sanders would speak up. So on Friday, the day after we posted that video, turns out not only Bernie Sanders released a comment, but Elizabeth Warren did as well, to their credit. So I want to share what they had to say. So Akila Lacey of The Intercept writes, Let me be clear, it is a disturbing attack on the First Amendment for the Trump administration to decide who is or is not a reporter for the purposes of a criminal prosecution, Sanders wrote in a tweet Friday afternoon after The Intercept contacted his office for comment. Donald Trump must obey the Constitution, which protects the publication of news about our government. Warren distanced herself from Assange, but condemned the Justice Department's move to curtail press freedom. Assange is a bad actor who has harmed U.S. national security, and he should be held accountable, Warren said in a statement. But Trump should not be using this case as a pretext to wage war on the First Amendment and go after the free press who hold the powerful accountable every day. So when it comes to Bernie Sanders, I'm glad he spoke out. I really don't have any problem with what he said there. When it comes to Elizabeth Warren, I take issue with what she said here. This is deeply, deeply mixed. On one hand, she's doing what she needs to do in saying that this is not the right move. Donald Trump's administration should not be indicting someone because they don't like the information that was leaked. But then again, she adds the caveat here, Assange is a bad actor who has harmed U.S. national security and he should be held accountable. So we'll take this in two parts because really there's two claims being made here. One is that Assange is a bad actor and two is that this threatens national security. What he did in releasing the Manning leaks that posed a threat to national security. First of all, when it comes to Assange being a bad actor, I think that you can make a pretty reasonable case that that is true because there were leaked DMs that disclose he did in fact support Donald Trump. They created this imbalance of information where they released dirt on the DNC, which they were right to do, but at the same time, they withheld information that was also in the public's interest, which made it seem like, you know, Democrats were more corrupt than Republicans. Whereas if we saw the RNC emails, you know, we likely would have seen them plotting against Donald Trump. So you can make that case. However, that's if you consider 2016, when this isn't actually about 2016, it's about 2010 and the 2010 Manning leaks. So in that instance, if you're going to say that Julian Assange was a bad actor to release what Chelsea Manning gave to him that exposed our war crimes, how we bombed first responders in foreign countries, you cannot make the case that he was being a bad actor in that instance. But with that being said, to even dwell on his character, I think you miss the point. So, you know, it's iffy. That portion of her response is iffy. But when we get into the second portion of her argument, she says that what he did was harm U.S. national security. Now, again, maybe she's talking about 2016, but this entire thing is about 2010. So I have to assume that she's referring to the release of the Manning leak, and that supposedly harmed national security by exposing our government's war crimes. And my question is, how? How does that harm national security? Have you ever heard the story, The Boy Who Cried Wolf? Because that's what's going on when it comes to the United States invoking national security. Anything that they don't want us to know, they say, oh, well, you can't, you can't have that information because it poses a threat to our national security. And we have to withhold that information that may or may not be in the public's interest because, you know, we don't want to jeopardize national security. 
It's the ultimate Trump card, you know? Donald Trump says the same thing about articles he doesn't like. If, you know, some outlet publishes something that doesn't portray him in a positive light, he'll call it fake news. Is it actually fake news? No, usually not. Is it biased? Sure, you can make that case. But he says it if he's trying to deflect. So whenever the U.S. doesn't want us to know something, they'll say, you know, national security. So Elizabeth Warren, you can't just say, you know, what he did in releasing those leaks posed a threat to national security. You can't just say that without making the case for it. Like, we need evidence. You need to make an argument as to why that harms national security. Because thinking about this logically, I can't see how that would harm national security. How? Now, one of the arguments that they made was, oh, well, you know, the reason why it harms national security is because it makes our veterans abroad vulnerable because if other people who are enemy combatants who we are fighting against and people in these other countries that we're occupying know that we're committing these war crimes and that may make them feel hostile towards the United States. First of all, there's no evidence that that's true. And I think that's what they really tried to say about the uh, Chelsea Manning leaks. But second of all, then you need to be a lot more cautious about conducting affairs, have more accountability, and stop doing war crimes, most importantly. So what she said here, what Elizabeth Warren said here, absurd, completely absurd. On one hand, I'm glad and I give her credit for, you know, saying that Donald Trump should not pursue Julian Assange. He shouldn't prosecute Julian Assange. She's essentially taking Obama's stance. But in saying that the Manning leaks posed a threat to national security, that's a really weak response. So lately, Elizabeth Warren, there's peaks and valleys with her, right? At times, she'll go up in my book because she'll introduce a lot of great policies, but then she'll go down because she'll say something that doesn't even make sense. It's not progressive. And the biggest thing is she's against Medicare for All, but then she also came out, you know, against fundraisers, and then she said on the Young Turks, but if I win in the general, it's, you know, all hands on deck. We're going to go and do these fundraisers. So she's just, she's hot, she's cold. She's There's no consistency when it comes to whether or not she's progressive. It's clear to me that she is someone who has progressive instincts, but she's always going to be more than willing to put the establishment first. And that's why a lot of people don't even have her as their number two. It's because of things like this. So look, strong response from Bernie. It's... It's better late than never. You should have spoke out sooner, but nonetheless, what Warren said here is deeply troubling. But the point is that this is about press freedom. So they both at least got that right. And also Ron Wyden spoke out about this too, but I focused on Warren and Bernie because they're running for president. But look, you can't mess up on this issue. You cannot mess up on this issue. We are losing our civil liberties. The constitution is being eroded. And it's incumbent on you as an elected member of the Senate to stand up for our freedoms. So, I mean, I feel mixed on this. On one hand, I'm glad they spoke out and they're technically on the right side here. But what Elizabeth Warren said, it, it just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>